that Muhammad is there upon him. He is Almighty God, a lunatic, if he says that. We know we Muslims, we love our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We love him. We will do anything for him. We obey him. Even the non-Muslims. Michael H. Hart, when he wrote a book on 100 most influential people in the world, number one he gave to the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yet, yet, in spite of that, we will use the touchstone. Surah class. Though we respect him maximum, Amongst all the human beings, yet we we'll check with the touchstone, Surah Ikhlas. Kul ho Allahu ahad. Say is Allah one and only. Is Muhammad one and only? May peace be upon him. Allah has sent several messengers. He is not the only messenger. We agree is the last and final. But Quran says you have to believe in all the messengers. Do not differentiate in the belief of the messengers. Second is Allah Husamad. Allah the absolute and eternal. We know that our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was a great human being, but he was not absolutely eternal. He toiled, he worked hard. His biography tells us that he was even stoned many times. He prayed to Almighty God. He was not absolutely eternal. Third test is, Lamrid Valamulad. He begets not nor is begotten. We know that he was born in Mecca. He had a father and mother by the name of Abdullah and Amina. He had parents. He had children also. Fatima, may Allah be pleased with her. Ibrahim, may Allah be pleased with him. He had. He was begotten and he also beget. So he is not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sure. Though we Muslim, we love our Prophet. We respect our Prophet. No Muslim in his true senses will ever say that Prophet Muhammad is Almighty God. Never. You know why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has seen to it that the Islamic creed, the Shahada, says, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. There is no God but Allah and Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. We say this five times a day minimum. In the Adhan, in the Aqama, before Salah we always say, there is no God but Allah and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah. He is the servant of Allah. To see to it that no one, however much he may love, he may not equate him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whoever you are saying is Almighty God, you use the touchstone. Whether it be Jesus, whether it be Ram, whether it be Krishna, whether it be Buddha, whether it be Mahavir, use the touchstone. I have given you the touchstone. On the day of judgment, I can give shahada to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the thousands of people that were present here, I showed them how to use the touchstone. Now the God that you worship, the God that you worship, you apply this formula of touchstone to that God. If it passes, the touchstone, even I agree, he is almighty God. If it doesn't pass, then you cannot call him God at all. Hope that answers the question. My name is M.D. Marathe. I am a te technologist. Uh, before I start, I would just like to explain that uh, I would like to take the audience from the sentimental plane to a more scientific and rational plane. I hope I have a permission to that. Today's school books present the following information. In the course of evolution, the animal man or Homo erectus evolved two million years ago with a brain size of 1000 cc against a size of 400 cc of the apes. Evolution continued with the brain growing to 1400 cc 200,000 years ago and this animal was known as Homo sapien. The present form of man was evolved about 35,000 years ago and is known as Homo sapiens sapien. Anthropologists have estimated that man developed a speech center in his brain 50,000 years ago. Now the question is, in this record of development, when did God originate and for what purpose? Number two, the progress of science has made it possible uh, to... Only one question, sir. You no, any no, question this you is in relation to that. If you cut it short... No, no, no it's, 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 the answer will not be long. Give me the time for the question, please. Yeah, yeah, okay. When the progress of science has made it possible to clone all animals including man, to produce any number of animals having all desired characteristics. If God ever existed, how much of the power attributed to God is now left with him? And the last, if God is ever existed, how much of the power attributed to God is now left with him? Third one, if God is described as a sea of kindness, finish, and mercy. Yet all leaders of all religions 
when faced with the prospect of death, rush to a hospital like the one next door and never to the place of worship where they preached all their life that man lives and dies by the wish of God. Is there an explanation for this phenomenon? So brother has asked basically three questions. First he gave, according to him, the theory of evolution of man and said, where does God fit in? Secondly, after God has created all this thing, how much of his power has been reduced? Thirdly, that when you get sick, you run to the hospital, not to the temple or church or masjid. Three part of the question. He said the answer will be short. The question was long. So imagine, to give a detailed answer will take time. Brother, I'd like to tell you that what you quoted about the hemosapiens, etc. You are talking about the theory of evolution, brother. Theory of evolution. I'm a medical doctor. I have not come across a single book in my life which says fact of evolution. It is theory of evolution. And even I know about the theory of evolution and about the Darwin's theory. Complete answer referred to my video cassette, Quran and Modern Science Conflict of Conciliation. What Darwin said was only a theory. He wrote a letter to his friend Thomas Thompson in 1881 that I believe in this theory of natural selection because I don't have any proof. Only because it helps me in natural selection, it helps me in embryology, in classification, in rudimentary organs. There's no book saying the fact of evolution. All the books say theory of evolution. That's why if we have to say to a friend that if you are present at Darwin's time, Darwin's theory have been proved right. Trying to insinuate you look like an ape. They were missing links. Darwin himself said they were missing links. You spoke about the homo you only spoke about one wave. I'll tell you about all the four waves. The first wave was Lucy. Lucy. Lucy was the first wave which came three and a half million years. You talk about two million years, I'm telling you what scientists have said three million years ago. Lucy. It died out by the Ice Age. The second came the Homo erectus. Homo erectus. About 500,000 years. After that came the Neanderthal man. The third wave, about 40,000 years ago. And the last was the cro -Magnon. But brother, there is no link between all these stages. It's only a hypothesis. According to P.P. P. Grasset, according to P.P. P. Grasset, who held the chair of evolutionary studies in Paris, in Shoujo University, in 1971 he said, it is letting our imagination run too wild, just based on vestiges to say who our ancestors were. I do know there are some people who speak about Darwin's theory. I am a medical doctor, I know about that. But do you know there are hundreds of scientists who speak against it? The few scientists, few scientists speak in favor, but there are more who speak against it. For the complete answer, refer to my video called Quran Modern Science. There are few scientists because there is no fact of evolution, they say let's support a theory. Quran doesn't support any theory or hypothesis. Quran speaks about fact. So regarding your two million years, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no beginning. When man came, no one knows the exact date. No one knows. Assumption, assumption. Assumption is there. But Quran says the first man was Adam alayhi salam. First man. And with it came Eve. May Allah be pleased with her. Man hasn't reached that stage. There is not a single statement in the Holy Quran which science has proved wrong yet. Hypothesis go against the Quran. Theories go against the Quran. There is not a single scientific fact which is mentioned in the Holy Quran which goes against established science. It may go against theory. So brother, your thing is only supported by few people, not by the majority. Regarding second part of the question, that if Allah has created all these things, how less His power has become. You can't understand it completely. As the Quran says in Surah Anam chapter 6 verse 103, is beyond comprehension. I can give you a simile, not exactly the same, an ocean. If you take a drop out of the ocean, how much does the level of the ocean go down? How much? How much? Wow. Yet, yet, in spite of this, the difference between Allah becoming less when He creates things and the difference between the level of the ocean becoming less is infinite. 
the level of the ocean may become 0.000000 somewhere 0.00 somewhere it will end but allah subhanahu wa taala not even and not even a bit becomes this he is all powerful that allah subhanahu wa taala if such a god who becomes less we don't worship such god who become less if on creating he will sometime lose his power so this god is eternal absolute as i said in my talk he is absolute and eternal everything depends on him he doesn't depend on anything where did allah come allah was before the universe created where did he fit in where did he get created he is uncreated you ask me the question where did he come into existence he is uncreated it's like you asking me that when i tell that my friend he told me that my brother tom he gave birth to a child is the child girl or a boy i being a doctor know very well a man cannot give birth to a child so where does the question come whether it's girl or a boy so you are asking me when did allah come fit in the picture allah is uncreated because he is uncreated the question doesn't arise when did he come he is there question doesn't arise regarding a third part of the question that when people get sick they run to the hospital they don't run to the temple they don't run to the mosque not to the church the brother may not be knowing all the people i am a doctor i know that when the doctors give up the thing we doctors say we doctors say who is shafi it is he who cures that doesn't mean a person gets sick only go to the temple because the quran says in surah nahl chapter 16 verse 43 as well as in surah furqan chapter 25 verse 59 if you are in doubt go to a person who knows who's an expert if you get sick besides pain to allah subhanahu wa taala go to a person who's an expert in medicine go to a doctor quran says that but even after going to the doctor have faith in allah because he is the person who cures you he can cure you with a doctor or without a doctor so allah subhanahu wa taala says we don't believe in blind belief no muslim scholar will ever say if you are sick don't go to a doctor so go to a doctor but finally the person who cures is allah subhanahu wa taala that's why all the doctors when all their brain all their science all the medicine fails they say it is only allah who can save you assalam alaikum brother i am dr kamar ara and my question is christians explain the concept of trinity as well as that god can take human form by giving the example that water can be present in three states as solid like ice liquid as water and gas as vapor yet it is one and the same water similarly a person can also be a father a brother a businessman at the same time but yet he is the one and the same person so why not the father the son and the holy spirit the sister has a question regarding trinity if the christians have the concept of trinity father son holy ghost the previous question was i proved it that from the bible jesus peace be upon him never believed in trinity now she gave an example she is giving a human logic ask me a question that if water can be present in three states as solid liquid and gas as ice water and vapor when water can be in three state why can't god be similarly the christian missionary they pose the question even god almighty can be present in three forms father son and holy ghost now if you analyze i do agree matter can be in three states solid liquid and gas but you should realize that if water is present in three states solid liquid gas as ice water and vapor in all the three states the constituent the component of water is the same h2o even if it's ice the constituent and component is h2o even when it is water it is h2o even when it is vapor it is h2o even when it's ice even when it is gas or liquid it is h2o that's very important now let's analyze the example they gave of trinity father son and holy ghost in three forms if you say for sake of argument i agree but 
आर द कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंट ऑफ ऑल दीज थ्री थिंग्स फादर सन दैट जीजस का स्पीच बी अपॉन हिम एंड होली गोल्स द सेम वी नो वेरी वेल दैट ह्यूमन बींग्स हैव गॉट फ्लैश एंड बोन अ स्पिरिट एंड गॉड ऑल माइटी हैज गॉट नो फ्लैश एंड बोन ह्यूमन बींग्स रिक्वायर टू ईट गॉड ऑल माइटी डज नॉट रिक्वायर टू ईट and the same message jesus christ peace be upon him gave it's mentioned in the gospel of luke chapter number 24 verse number 39 to 43 that behold my hands and feet it's i myself handle me and see that a spirit has got no flesh and bone as you see me have and he gave his hands and feet and they were overjoyed to prove what that he was not a spirit he was not god almighty and the verse continues do you have meat to eat and the next verse says that he ate broiled fish and honeycomb to prove what that he was god to prove that he was not god jesus christ peace be upon him said a spirit has no flesh and bone as i have proving that he was not a spirit he was not almighty god regarding the second example just to give the example that a person can be a father a brother and a businessman at the same time So why can't God be Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? It's a very good example, and I do agree that one person can be a father, can be a brother, and can be a businessman at the same time. Many people out here also may be father, brother, and businessman at the same time. But if suppose the sister of that man tells a secret to the brother, but natural, even the father and businessman will know that secret. Because one and the same person, if a sister tells the secret to the brother, who is the father and a businessman same time, when the secret is told to the brother, even the father part of that man and businessman part of that man will know that secret. But when you read in the Bible, in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number thirteen, verse number thirty-two, it says, "Of that day, of that hour, knoweth no man, no, not even the angels in the heaven, nor the son of man, but the father." the knowledge of the hour of that day no one knows jesus christ peace be upon him said except the father not even the angels not even himself if father that god almighty and jesus christ peace be upon him one and the same and if knowledge of hour is known to god almighty even jesus should know about it peace be upon him so this proves that they were not one <laughs> father father if the brother dies even the man and the businessman will die If the brother dies, even man and businessman will die. So when Jesus Christ peace be upon him, according to the Bible, according to the Christian, he died on the cross. Do you mean to say even God Almighty and the Holy Ghost died? Assalamu alaikum. I am Riyaz Vadkamkar and a businessman. So my question is, Allah is the most appropriate name for God. So besides Quran. is it mentioned in any other religious scriptures to so pose the question that allah subhanahu wa taala has explained my talk is an appropriate name for allah subhanahu wa taala almighty god is this name allah mentioned anywhere else in the other religious scriptures if you analyze most of the religious scriptures which have the concept of almighty god somewhere or the other most probably one of the attributes of god almighty is allah subhanahu wa taala for example if you read the bible in the hebrew language they call god almighty as elohim him is a sign of respect in the semitic languages so actually it is elo elo for god and if you read the bible old testament also it says for god elo or ela and in the english bible revised by reverend scofield he gives the spelling of ela as alternatively either as e l or e l a h or a l a h the pronounce as ela l ela or ela a l a h we muslim when we write in english allah we write a l l a h but reverend scofield wrote a l a h they pronounce ela we pronounce allah when i was in school i was taught to to do do jo jo is what not go it is go i was taught beauty but futy cut anuty nut puty not but but i said what sort of a language is this 
He said, no, you have to say beauty, but not but. And if I have to pass the examination, even I say beauty, but. Geo is not go, it is go. I have to, because it's their language. Similarly, we know how to pronounce correctly Allah. They say Allah, he said, no problem. The right pronunciation is Allah. Later on, when Reverend Scofield realized what he had done, that he is coming closer to the Quran, maybe people took objection. In the revised edition, that thing is taken out. ALH is taken out. So now when you get the Scofield English Bible, only EL and ELH is there. ALH is not there. But in spite of that, yet, Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in every Bible, yet, the name of Allah is there. Because, according to the Bible, when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, allegedly he was crucified, it's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 27, verse number 46, as well as in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 15, verse number 34, when he was put on the cross, he cried out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. So as to say, O oh God, O oh God, why hast thou forsaken me? If you analyze and ask them, that what is Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? It's a Hebrew quotation. But it has been maintained. Even in the English Bible, it has been maintained. And then they translate. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. O oh God, O oh God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some people say the name of God is Jehovah. So I ask them, does Allah, Allah, Lama Sabakhtani sound like Joha, Joha, why has thou forsaken me? They say no. Does it sound like Jesus, Jesus, peace be upon him, why has thou forsaken me? They say no. Hebrew and Arabic language are sister languages. If you translate Allah, Allah, Lama Sabakhtani into Arabic, it is Allah, Allah, Lama Taraktani. Does it sound similar? Yes. Why? Sister language. And the best part of it is that the Bible has been translated into more than 2,000 different languages. And in every language, this quotation is verbatim the same. Allah, Allah, Lama Sabakhtani. Whether it's a Tamil Bible, Chinese Bible, Hebrew Bible, any Bible, this Hebrew quotation has been maintained and the word Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there in each and every translation of the Bible. This word Allah, like Guru Nanak, one of the attributes he gave to God is Rahim. Also he gave Allah. If you read the Hindu scripture Upanishads, one of the Upanishads is called as the Allah Upanishad. And God Almighty has called by Allah several times. Even in Rig Ved, even if you read the Rig Ved, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the attributes is given in book number 2, hymn number 1, verse number 11, the name, one of the attributes of God Almighty is Allah. They write it as I-L-A. But when you pronounce it, we have to tell them, pronounce it as Allah. Hope that answers the question. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Haji Muhammad. Brother Zakir, Brother Zakir, you mentioned in your talk that Jesus never claimed divinity. But it is mentioned in the Bible that Jesus said, I and my father are one. Does this not imply that he claimed divinity? Well, that was a question that I said in my talk that nowhere does the Bible say that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, claimed divinity. And he gave a quotation of the Bible that Jesus said, I and my father are one. What the brother is quoting is a verse from the Bible in the Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 30, which does say, I and my father are one. But when you ask the Christian missionaries that what is the context? I have not yet met a Christian missionary who can tell you the context without opening the Bible. He knows I and my father are one, but he doesn't know the context. For example, if I quote to someone that the Quran says do not pray, most of the Muslims will be shocked. What is I am talking? And if you open it up, they do not pray, but it's half the verse. Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse 43 says, do not pray with your mind before. Do not pray when you are intoxicated. So if I only quote, do not pray, it will mean Quran says don't pray. Have the quotation. So for context, I and my father are one. You have to go to Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 23. And I am quoting from my memory. That Jesus walked into the temple in Solomon's porch, verse number 24. There is, and the Jews came around him and asked him, How long does thou make us doubt? If thou art the Christ, tell us plainly. 
verse number 25 says i told you but you believe me not the works that i do in my father's name they bear witness of me verse number 26 says that you believe not because you are not my sheep as i said unto you the jews they have asked me jesus christ peace be upon him that why don't you speak plainly so he tells them that yes i am the messiah i have told you clearly but because you are not my sheep you don't believe in me verse number 27 continues jesus christ peace be upon him continues saying that my sheep they hear my voice and i know them and they follow me verse 28 that i give them eternal life no man can pluck them out of my hand and they shall not perish verse number 29 says my father who give it to me he is greater than all no man can pluck them out of my father's hand then verse number 30 says i and my father are one any person who has little bit sense can make out i and my father are one doesn't mean one as one person it means one in purpose verse number 28 says no man can pluck them out of my hand jesus christ peace be upon him saying no man can pluck them out of my hand verse 29 is saying no man can pluck them out of my father's hand verse number 30 says i and my father are one in purpose both jesus christ peace be upon him and almighty god they are one in purpose if i say that my father is a doctor and he is a doctor alhamdulillah even i am a doctor if i say i and my father are one what does it mean it means one in purpose as medical profession my father is a doctor even i am a doctor it doesn't mean that i and my father are one it means my father is a medical doctor even i am a medical doctor but christian say no no it means one actual unity so we say okay you say actual unity let's read further if you go ahead in the gospel of john chapter number 17 verse number 21 it says that jesus christ peace be upon him said that ye all of them are one my father in me and i in thee we all are one does it mean that god almighty is in jesus christ and jesus christ is in all his 12 disciples so there will be 14 gods jesus christ god almighty and 12 disciple the same one is used there and here if you go to the source the same word is used if you go to the greek same word is used so does it mean you have 14 gods and among those disciples judas was the traitor even he is god thomas doubted jesus christ peace be upon him is he god peter jesus christ says he is satanic is he also god no all of them god almighty jesus christ and the apostle are one in purpose they are same again if you go two verses ahead gospel of john chapter 17 verse 23 says that i am in thee and you are in me he tells the disciple does it make all of them god no it means one in purpose but then christian will so we have quoted the first part why don't you quote after that after verse number 30 gospel of john chapter 10 let's go ahead gospel of john chapter number 10 verse number 31 says and jews picked up stones again to stone at jesus peace be upon him verse number 32 says and jesus peace be upon him asked them for which of the good works of my father do you stone me verse 33 says that we don't stone you for any good work but because you blaspheme being a man call yourself god that's why we stone you what about him i am reading from my memory any person wants to check up can check up it's there in the bible gospel of john chapter 10 verse 23 onwards i'm quoting so jesus christ peace be upon him give the answer the jews say that see he is trying to blast him calling himself god good riddance they want to kill him good riddance the so christians say, oh the jews called him god almighty see they understood him correctly for redemption one wants for redemption they are calling him god the other group of people for good riddance but the answer is given in the next verse verse number 34 of john chapter 10 gospel of john chapter 10 says that is it not mentioned in your scriptures that ye are gods and if the person to whom the word of god came if he says god the scripture is not broken if you check up in the bible in the psalm chapter number 82 verse number 6 does say that ye are gods so jesus christ gave the answer that the person to whom the word of god came if you call him god it is not blaspheme it is meaning that they are one in purpose hope that answers the question assalam alaikum this is uh, yasin i am a software engineer by profession 
my question is the hindu pandits and scholars agree that the vedas and other hindu religious scriptures prohibit idol worship but initially because the mind may not be matured therefore an idol is required for concentration while worshiping after the mind reaches higher consciousness the idol is not required for concentration what do you have to say about this the brother has a question that the hindu pandits and scholars they agree that the vedas is against idol worship against making image of almighty god but they give the logic that initially because the mind is not matured we require idol to concentrate later on when you reach higher consciousness idol is not required if this is the logic i would like to say that we muslims have already reached the higher consciousness we don't require we don't require any idols to concentrate on almighty god we have already reached the higher consciousness if this is the logic but now let's analyze once i was having a discussion with a swami from the iskon hari ram hari krishna you know it's in bombay hari ram hari krishna he came to rf and we were having a discussion on idol worship so he gave me the example that brother zakir see when your son asks you why does it thunder so you tell him that ai ma chakki pisti hai ai ma chakki pisti hai that is the grandmother in heaven she is grinding flower why because the child is innocent can understand therefore we give this similarly human beings because they are immature initially idol is allowed later on when they get matured idol is not allowed so i tell them and i told this swami from his con hari ram hari krishna that i will never tell my child when he asks me why does it thunder that ai ma chakki pisti hai grandmother is grinding flower you know why because to tell a lie is haram it is wrong to tell a lie in islam you cannot even if it is a white lie you can't say in extreme cases certain cases someone puts a gun and you lie that's a difference otherwise normal circumstances why should a person lie because if i tell my son that i ma chakki pisti hai grandmother is grinding flower in heaven when he goes to school and when the teacher teaches him that the thundering after lightning is due to expansion of rapidly heated air he will think the teacher is lying and after when he comes to know the fact he will say my father was a liar <laughs> i much akine bhi isliye so this is the problem that why should you say such wrong things and this philosophy is a common amongst all the human beings common most of them if not all and you know we have like those people who stay in a building like when they play with the children you know they throw the toy out kawa leke gaya crow has taken it you know you do the action of throwing the toy out of the building kawa leke gaya then you find even your child is throwing out toys <laughs> and then when you ask these parents why are your children throwing out toys wo to everyone does sab log karte sab children dikhte the mother will tell all the children throw out toys so if my child throws what is great all the children don't throw it is because most of the parents do this trick kawa leke gaya so even he wants to do that trick even he throws it out my son alhamdulillah we are staying in ninth story ninth story in masgon my son has never thrown any toy you know why i have never played the trick with him kawa leke gaya so you teach wrong things and your child remains following wrong things best is to give the answer simplify simplify and give the answer to the best of the understanding i know the child many things don't understand give the answer in a simple way but if you don't know the answer you should have the guts to tell the truth i don't know but most of the children especially nowadays they won't take the simple answer if i tell my son i don't know he will tell me abba why don't you know <laughs> so what happens then we have to do a homework we have to go and find the answer it educates us as well as our children but never tell a lie you can never let your child grow up on falsehood there are other pandits when i have discussions they give me the examples let's see brother zakir we do know that vedas are against idol worship and it's wrong to do idol worship but initially standard one because the mind is not matured idol worship is fine but when they graduate then idol worship not required so i tell them that if a person goes to school in standard one the fundamentals the basics of any subject should be strong if the basics and fundamentals are strong in future even the structure will be strong if the basics are not strong the structure will not be strong 
So if a teacher teaches in standard one in mathematics, two plus two is equal to four. Even after he goes to standard three, four, five, when he passes school, when he becomes a graduate, even if he does PhD in mathematics, yet two plus two will always remain four. He may learn trigonometry, algebra, logarithms, but the basics of arithmetic addition, two plus two, will remain the same. If the teacher teaches wrong things, two plus two is five. Or two plus two is equal to six. In standard one, what will happen to the student when he graduates? Therefore, the basics should always be strong. The fundamentals should always be strong. And these scholars, they know very well the fundamentals of the Vedas are regarding concept of God that God has got no image. You cannot make any idol of God. That's the fundamental. I ask these people that if you know that the followers of a religion are doing wrong things, it's your duty to correct them. If your son says two plus two is equal to five, will you keep quiet? In standard one, you say no, no. Let him graduate, then I tell him that two plus two is equal to four. Will you say that? You will correct him initially. You won't wait till he graduates. As much as you can explain, you explain. So if they know the Vedas are against idol worship, it's their job to tell the people that this is the fundamental of faith. Even in the initial stages, you can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without an idol. Hope that answers the question. Now we would allow one question on the slip and one on the mic in continuing in the clockwise rotation so that we give an opportunity for the people who have taken the trouble to write the question on the slip. One question on the slip, then on the mic, again on the slip, then on the mic, again on the slip and on the mic. Uh, the question is, when all believe in one God, why people fight in the name of God and in the name of religion? The person has a question that if all the people, all the human beings, or most of them, believe in one God, believe in one type of religion, why do they fight? Why is there so much of infighting, riots, etc.? No. no religion which I know of tell that people should fight with each other unnecessarily. No religion says that. Neither the Quran, neither the Veda, neither the Bible. Unnecessarily should not. And the Holy Quran says in Surah Maida chapter number 5 verse number 32. If anyone kills any human being, unless it be for murder or creating mischief in the land, it is as though you have killed the whole of humanity. Quran does not say if you kill a Muslim you have killed the whole of humanity. If you kill any human being, unless it be for murder or creating mischief in the land, it is as though you have killed the whole of humanity. So no religion teaches that people should fight with each other unnecessarily. Suppose people are trying to oppress you. Then most of the religion says that you should put that oppressor back in its place. Quran says that, Surah Anfal, Surah Tawbah, that if the people try to drive you out of your house, out of your faith, out of your land, then you can fight them for self-defense. Even the Gita, the whole Bhagavad Gita, it is known as the nectar of the Vedas, Lord Krishna, he is giving advice to Arjun that see, you fight for the truth. Even if the opposite people are relatives, don't stop. If they are in the wrong, you fight. The Quran says in Surah Isra chapter 17 verse 81, وَقُلْ جَعَ الْحَقْ وَزَاقَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ قَانَ زَهُوكَ فُنَزُّلُ مِنَ الْقُرَانَ مَا وَشِفَا وَرَحْمَةُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا إِذُ ظَالْمِ إِلَّا خَسَارًا That when truth is heard against falsehood, falsehood perishes. For falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. The Quran is a healing and mercy for those who believe. It was revealed in stages. But for those who are unbelievers, it's nothing but loss after loss. So basically, no religion tells you to fight. Unless in self-defense. Even the police kills the robber in self-defense. Kills the criminal. But normally, under normal circumstances, people should not fight. But yet I do know that people fight. Why? Is the big question. You know what the reason? The reason is people fight for power, for material things. The politician, he wants vote. So what does he do? He instigates a riot. A riot. And then you get marginalized. And then Hindus vote Hindu, Muslim vote Muslim. Politicians. If a builder wants a land, you can't acquire the land because there are thousand huts there. What does he do? He instigates a riot on the base of religion. The huts are burned down and then he builds a big building on that land for money. So these people, for power, for money, for material requirements, these people, they instigate the riots. Otherwise, 
the common Hindu, the common Muslim, Alhamdulillah, we love each other. We love our non-Muslim brother. <laughs> Bombay, if you know Bombay, even during partition, there was not such a right as we had a couple of years ago. Engineered by whom? Politicians. Politicians engineered it. All because for power, for material desire. Otherwise, no religion says that we should fight with one another. We do know. We have similarities. We agree with that. We have differences also. But a politician, on front of everyone, you say, Ram bhi khuda, Allah bhi khuda. Front of it. And behind you goes an engineer's rights. See, we don't believe in pseudo-secularism. If suppose, two people are there, one person is saying, two plus two is equal to four. The other person is saying, two plus two is equal to five. That does not mean, oh, he's such a good man. Two plus two is also equal to four. Two plus two is also equal to five. Ah, I am a very Dejbak, secular person. What secular? Hypocrisy. I should have the guts to say, see, what you are saying, two plus two is equal to four is right. What you are saying, two plus two is five is wrong, but I will not fight with you. I will tell you the truth, I will not fight with you. Same the Quran says in Surah Kafirun, chapter 109, verse number 1 to 6. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ لَا أَعْبُدُ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا عَبُدْ وَلَا أَنَا عَابِدُمْ مَا عَبَدْتُمْ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا عَبُدْ لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَ الدِّينَ Say to those who reject faith, I will not worship what you worship, nor will you worship what I worship. I will not be worshipping that which you want me to worship, nor will you worship what I worship. To you is your way, to me is mine. To you is your religion, to me is mine. I will present the truth to him. I don't do idol worship. Don't have wrong concept of God. Yet if you have, lakum dinukum wal yadin. To use your way to me is mine. The Holy Quran says in Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse number 256. Like al There is no compulsion in religion. Truth stands out clear from error. If you hold the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will take you from darkness to light. If you hold the hand of the evil one, the devil, He will take you from light to darkness. The choice is yours. But no religion says that you should fight with each other unnecessarily. Hope that answers the question. My name is Sushil Karamputkar, official photographer, All India Radio, Vivid Bharati Service and Bombay Durdashan Kendra. I have visited holy country of uh, Islam, that is Saudi Arabia, three times and spent nearly four years uh, in Saudi Arabia and watched Islam from closer distance. Now, Dr. Jakinak, my question is, there is a Muslim blind person. His one eye is replaced by eye donated by a Hindu person. His kidney... One kidney is replaced by kidney donated by a Christian person and his heart is replaced by a heart donated by a Parsi gentleman. Such a Muslim person will be allowed to perform prayers in the mosque. The brother asked the question that he has been to Saudi Arabia and one person is eyes from a Hindu or heart from a Christian and kidney from so and so, various things. So having eye from another religion, heart from another religion, can you offer salah in the mosque? The answer is, brother, according to Islam, every human being is born as a Muslim. Every heart is a Muslim. Every kidney is a Muslim. Every eye is a Muslim. What is the meaning of Muslim? Muslim is the person who submits the will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every heart submits the will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm talking about the organic heart. Organic heart, no? Organic heart, it pumps blood. The heart of the Christian pumps blood. The heart of a Muslim pumps blood. The heart of a Hindu pumps blood. The heart is a Muslim. Talking about the organic heart. I, the organic I, is a Muslim. But you see wrong things. I'm sorry, I'm not telling you. You mean? You. The human being sees wrong things. So human being is to blame. But the eye sees. The eye is following the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The kidney, it's doing its job. It's purifying. It's a Muslim. So whether heart taken from a person who is born in a Hindu family or Christian family, every heart is a Muslim, every eye is a Muslim, every kidney is a Muslim, he will be very well allowed to play in a mosque. But even if a non-Muslim wants to come to the mosque, he is most welcome. <laughs> Our beloved Prophet, he has discussion about concept of God. Time didn't permit me, the revelation of Surah Ikhlas, the touchstone, the touchstone of theology, which I gave to everyone, was revealed when? When he was having a discussion with the Christians in the mosque. And they asked him, Who is Allah? Oh, what can you think? 
the Quran says you convert all the trees into pens, all the ocean into ink. What will he say, Rahman, Rahim? What answer can he give? The direct revelation came. Kul, tell them. Kul, hu Allahu ahad. Say he is Allah one and only. Allah is Samad. Allah is the absolute and eternal. Lam minat valam yulad. He begets not noise, he begotten. Walam ya kul lahu kufanad. There is nothing like him. Next question from the slip is from uh, Swati S. Malik. She is an engineer. That, as you mentioned in your talk that Hindus say, sun, moon, snake and monkey is God. Basically it's not like that. We Hindus don't believe that the above mentioned things are God. But we believe that God is everywhere. God is in each and every thing. God is in coat. God is in air, in fire. Does Islam believe the same? If not, then why? What's wrong in this? The question posed was that they believe that the moon, the sun, the tree, they are God, but God is present everywhere. Since God is present everywhere, therefore, we worship it. What does Islam believe? See, the Holy Quran says that wherever you turn your face, you will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is everywhere. But what does it mean? Are you talking Allah is present physically? First question is, is Allah physical? When Quran says Allah is everywhere, do you mean it is physical? My question is, what do you mean Allah is everywhere? Is it physical? If physical, if you believe Allah is physical, then you should be able to see it. No, I can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not physical. The knowledge of Allah is everywhere. The knowledge of Allah is everywhere. Allah has power over all things. But physically, He is not everywhere. First of all, is God physical? So therefore, the Quran gives the logic. In Surah Shura, chapter 42, verse number 11, Laisa kamisli shay. There is nothing unto Him. Nothing like whatever unto Him. So if you give physical natures to God, that's the reason you worship the idols. So I'm telling you, the moment you worship the sun, do you mean to say God is only there, nowhere else? Or even if I agree with you, okay, you say God is every mistake of argument, I agree with you. But then you are worshipping only a small part of God. The tree, very small in the full universe, speck. That means, indirectly, you are saying well, God is so small, only in the tree, only in the snake. So therefore, if you have to worship, worship the true God Almighty. Even though His knowledge is present everywhere, he is present everywhere, not in the physical form. Hope that answers the question. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Brother Zakir Nayak. My question is regarding the form of Allah. Surah number 39, Zumar, verse 67. The translation says that, And on the day of resurrection, the whole of the earth will be grasped by His hand, and the heavens will be rolled up in His right hand. There is also an hadith in support of this, Sahih al-Bukhari, volume 6, hadith number 336. Can we just imagine some form of Allah? The sister asked the question and Surah Al-Zumur, it says, she is correct, Quran does say that, that in the day of judgment is the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold all the creation and various verses in the Quran, etc. But if you heard my talk, sister, I gave you the key word. The key, the key to this concept is for Ashura, chapter 42, verse number 11, which says, Laisa kamisli hi shay. There is nothing whatever like him. So if Quran says Allah has hands, people ask me that if Quran says Allah holds the sky, what do you mean he holds like that? If I say I am holding my family together, do you mean to the 24 hours I am with my wife and my child? I'm not holding my wife and child always, yet I'm holding them, but I'm not holding them like that. These are words used. And whenever, as I said, if Quran says Allah sees and hears, you owe oh, that means Allah is here like us. He hears. How he hears? Allah alam. Allah knows. He has a hand, but not like yours and mine. Five fingers. With nail. And with this. Not like that. He has a hand, yes, he has a hand. How he has a hand? There is nothing like him. How will he do it? Allah alam. He will do it for sure. Quran says he holds the right hand, he will hold it in the right hand. 
how we hold it with five fingers or six fingers i don't know on the day of judgment inshallah you and i will witness that the next question from the slip assalamu alaikum brother zakir as muslims we believe that allah subhanahu wa taala is noor we cannot attribute any form or gender to him why then when we speak of almighty god or as written in the holy quran allah is always referred to as he a sister the sister has asked a very good question and this question had troubled me for several years and she asked the question allah is noor he has got no form no gender so why is it written as hua as he and this question asked to various people you know in india and other scholars but never got a satisfactory reply then i myself did little research and then i checked it up with the experts that when i learned arabic the grammar the arabic grammar has got only two genders male and female english language three gender male female neuter so if we translate hua into english it can be translated as he or as it either he or it same as hiya if you translate into english it can be translated as she or it that's arabic language two genders english language three genders so who if you translate you can translate he or it hiya as she or it so hua in english if you say allah subhanahu wa taala is beyond any gender so why have used he some people may say that if hua means he and it and hiya means she and it both means it so why did allah use hua and not hiya was quran says qul huwa allah hu ahad say he is allah one only when i learned in grammar in arabic grammar i was told that in the arabic grammar there are certain rules and criteria for feminine gender feminine gender first if it is feminine in nature like mother ummun it becomes a feminine gender second rule if it ends with the so it is feminine gender like mirwahatun fan ending with the it becomes feminine gender allah subhanahu wa taala is not a female so it can't be feminine it is not ending with the is it ending with the no so can't be feminine third is it should end with bada alif then becomes feminine Allah doesn't end with bala alif, so it can't become feminine. And another one is that pairs of the body, twos, the like eyes, ainun, feminine, yadun, hands, feminine. Allah is kul ho Allah wad, say is Allah one only. It's not pair. So therefore, in defection, in default, since it can't be used as he or it, that she it, Allah uses who are it. Otherwise, Allah subhanahu wa taala has got no gender at all. Assalamu alaikum brother so uh, my, my name is Ali Hussain now in your talk you have mentioned that and even in your earlier talks which i have heard you have mentioned that jesus in bible is nowhere claiming divinity now i had gone through a booklet which was pro- propagating christianity and implying that all the sufferings are uh, healed by jesus peace be upon him and uh, it gave the reference that jesus is saying i am the lord who heals you and the reference was from exodus chapter number 15 verse number 26 and even it went further saying that in first john chapter number 1 verse number 7 the blood of jesus his son cleanses us from all sins now my emphasis on the first reference where he is saying that i am the lord who heals you now doesn't this imply or doesn't this indicate that jesus is claiming divinity the brother is quoting exodus chapter number 15 verse number 26 verse 26 and saying jesus said that i healed you brother exodus is a part of the old testament old testament jesus guy is never spoke in exodus never i said in my talk there is not a single unequivocal statement in the whole bible where jesus peace be upon him himself says that is god worship me this is the bible i have got by the christian king james version everything what jesus guy spoke is in red you check it up this will never be in red it is not the words of jesus it is word of somebody else and even if i agree with you for sake of argument that jesus did say that he heals and the quran does agree with that and i said in my talk we believe that he gave life to the dead 
with God's permission. He heals those born and blind with God's permission. So I've got no objection in agreeing that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, did heal the people. It's our faith, even we believe in it. But whatever he did, as the Bible says in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 28, he cast out devil by the Spirit of God. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 11, verse number 20, with the finger of God he cast out devils. He did everything which bore witness of the Father. So I've got no objection in agreeing that Jesus did do miracle. But regarding Exodus, it's not the word of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Even if it is, I've got no objection. Because whatever miracles he did, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said that this is done by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 24, verse number 24, For there shall arise many false Christ and false prophets. And if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Miracle is not the test. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, it's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 11, verse number 11, of those that are born of a woman, the greatest person is John the Baptist. Those that are born of a woman, the greatest person is John the Baptist. That means he was greater even than Jesus, peace be upon him, because Jesus was born to Mother Mary. So amongst all born of a woman, the greatest is John the Baptist according to Jesus, peace be upon him. Which miracle did he do? Not a single. Therefore, miracle is not the criteria to make him God. Hope that answers the question. I am sorry, the management of the hall has requested that we would not be permitted to extend the program further due to limitations of time and the next program coming up. So, though we appreciate, I have just one or two announcements. If you have any further questions on the subject or on Islam and comparative religion, you are most welcome to attend our lectures followed by question and answer sessions every Saturday at 3 p.m., every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. and every Monday for ladies at 3 p.m. at the Islamic Research Foundation Auditorium. Our next major public talk on Salah, the programming towards righteousness by Dr. Zakir Naik will inshallah be held on Sunday 7th December 1997 at 10 a.m. at Patkar Hall, Marine Lines, Mumbai. Let me once again remind you that besides the daily morning relay of IRF programs on cable TV for three hours in Mumbai, the ATN satellite TV channel telecasts IRF programs on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays from 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. Indian Standard Time across 68 countries of the world. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making this program possible. On behalf of the Islamic Research Foundation, I thank all our guests including the press for attending the program. We also appreciate and thank all the persons involved in the organizing and recording of this event. Jazakumullah khairan. <laughs>